So the second part of chapter eight is about developmental disorders. I may have said a while back, um, maybe in kinesiology, that I sort of, um, my, my brain likes to make structures. So um, I sort of think of the classes in this program as um, where things are, um, what goes wrong, and what we do about it. So kinesiology is sort of a where things are or how things work. Um, pathology is sort of a um, what goes wrong. And um, modalities and the uh, orthopedics and uh, neuro rehab classes, those are what we do about it. This class is a combination of where things are and what goes wrong. And then next quarter in neuro rehab, you'll learn what we do about it. So um, we talked a little bit very briefly in the last section about the um, development of the nervous system. And now we're going to talk about what goes wrong in the development of the nervous system and what kind of disorders result. There are a lot of um, super interesting things in the book about um, ADHD and autism spectrum disorders and a lot of other disorders that we're not going to talk about except very briefly. Um, but the ones that I want you to focus on are listed right here in the learning objectives. So um, the first learning objective, I want you to define the concept of growth into deficit, and I want you to be able to give an example of that. Um, we'll have a discussion board talking about that. Um, I want you to know during which period of development the central nervous system is most susceptible to major and minor malformations. Um, I want you to be able to describe the pathology, etiology, signs and symptoms of um, CP, cerebral palsy, and spina bifida. Um, and which type of spina bifida has the most symptoms and which type has the least. And that mixed in number three got um, carried up from number five. It belongs in number five. Um, for, for cerebral palsy, I want you to be able to state which part of the nervous system is affected in different types of CP. So in um, spastic, athertoid, ataxic, and mixed, and we'll talk about each one of those. So myelination begins in the fourth fetal month, and most myelin sheaths are completed by the end of the third year of life. So when we're babies and toddlers, we still aren't fully myelinated. So things aren't, um, all of our systems aren't online. So the process occurs at different rates in each symptom. Um, the motor ner nerve root, the spinal motor nerve root, is complete by about one month of age. And that's when babies start moving around more purposefully and being able to do a few things. Um, the tracks connecting the motor um, to the motor uh, cortex are not completely functional until around two years old. So um, that's when uh, babies can do more purposeful movement instead of, you know, what they can do when they're under two years old. But if you have damage to these tracks that happen during development, they might not show up until a specific developmental, a developmental time. So nervous system damage that occurs early is not evident until the damaged system normally becomes functional. So that's what we mean by growth into deficit. So it's like you, there's some damage that happened sometime during development, during all those complex developmental processes. But until the damaged system comes online, we're not going to know that there's damage. So um, there are all the different um, growth milestones and movement milestones that pediatricians will check. Um, and some of you who are parents might be familiar with these or people who have worked in a pediatric setting. Um, but a lot of times you're not going to know if there's damage until the child passes one of those developmental milestones and doesn't achieve that um, that milestone. So a lot of um, a lot of times there might be some damage and you don't realize it until later on. So that idea of growth into deficit um, is a difficult one, I think, for a lot of parents to grasp um, because they say, they say, well, there's nothing wrong. There was nothing wrong with my baby before, and now they have a disorder. What's going on? And try to find a cause for it. Well, the cause happened. Maybe maybe it happened in week eight of development, um, but until that system comes online, you're not really ever going to know. So the central nervous system is most susceptible to major malformations between day 14 of development and week 20. 
So if you're going to have a major malformation of the CMS, CNS, that is usually when it happens. After week 20, growth and remodeling continue, but later insults can cause functional disturbances or minor malformations. So um, some of the major malformations that occur between day 14 and week 20 make it so the fetus is not viable and then um, the person will have a miscarriage because um, the because the fetus can't survive. Um, some of them, they actually can survive to birth, and that's when you have major malformations. After week 20, um, you can have some minor malformations. So that's one of the learning objectives. You should know that. So during infancy, um, there are what are called critical periods. And they, there's times where uh, neuronal projections are competing for synaptic sites during which the nervous system optimizes neural connections. So there have been lots of, a lot of um, basic neuroscience research is done on animals. Um, I've, I'm not super comfortable with that. <laughs> I know a lot of people aren't. Um, in the neuroscience, um, medical neuroscience class I took last year, the researcher, um, his area of specialty was vision research, and he was talking about the animal research that he did. And he made a big point of how nice they treated the animals and how um, they really tried to make them comfortable and not feel threatened and all this other stuff. Um, but a lot of basic um, neuroscience research is done on animals. Um, so just know that in the back of your mind. Um, interruption of development during one of these critical periods when neurons um, are competing for synaptic sites may explain some of the differences in outcome between perinatal and adult brain injury. So if, the, um, if an injury happens or um, something happens to the infant nervous system during one of these critical periods, they may not recover from it. So um, one, of the, one of the areas of um, spinal development or uh, neural, neural development is um, neural tube development. And the most common neural tube development that um, we'll see, there are other ones, of course, but this is the one we're going to focus on. The most common one we'll see in physical therapy is um, spina bifida. And this is where the inferior neural pore doesn't close. And so you have an opening in the neural tube. So there are three types of, um, there are actually four types of um, spina bifida, but the first type is called occulta, and it's hidden. Um, the, the opening is so small that it's not noticeable, and there are often no symptoms associated with it. Um, spina bifida cystica is where um, the neural tube is opening, and there are symptoms associated with it. Um, there, uh, the meningocele is the least um, symptoms, Myelomeningocele is the second most, and myeloschisis is the, has the uh, most uh, detrimental effects. So it all has to do with um, which tissues are involved and what the effects are. So um, someone who has spina bifida, they could have um, effects to the point where they don't have use of their legs, um, or they could be fully functional and have some minor effects. So it depends on the extent to which the neural pore doesn't close. Spina bifida is um, actually caused by a parental um, nutritional deficiency, and it can be in the in not just the mother, but in both parents. Um, and it says folic acid deficiency. So that's something that can be totally prevented. Um, yay, it's kind of a good thing. Tethered spinal cord is where the cord adheres to a lower vertebra, causing dermatomal and mitomal deficits in the lower limbs. Um, it can cause pain in the saddle region and lower limbs and bowel and bladder dysfunction. Um, it depends on the level where it's stuck. If the traction is mild, the signs may only occur when mechanical stress increases, or the onset of signs might not occur until adolescence or later because they don't occur until there's enough growth that there's actual stress on the spinal cord. Cerebral palsy is a movement and postural disorder caused by permanent, non-progressive damage to the developing brain. So whatever damage happened as the brain was developing, it's non-progressive, it's not getting any worse, um, but, but um, children are born with 
um, this damage that happened during development. Um, the effects can include cognitive, somatosensory, visual, auditory, and speech deficits, and growing in a deficit is common, um, meaning there might be, you don't know the extent of the deficit until they've reached a certain um, developmental milestone. The damage in um, cerebral palsy is not progressive, but new problems may appear when developmental milestones are reached. Um, CP classifications are classified according to the type of motor dysfunction. And interestingly enough, it depends on the area of the brain that's affected. So spastic um, CP is damage to axons that are adjacent to the lateral ventricles um, where the cerebral spinal fluid is formed and um, it causes um, spasticity. Dyskinetic is neuronal damage in the basal ganglia area in the midbrain and it causes movement problems. Ataxic is damage in the cerebellum and um, that causes um, discoordination. Hypoton uh, hypotonic, um, it's unknown where the site of damage is in there, but it causes low tone and um, difficulty controlling the trunk. And mixed is uh, when more than one type of abnormal movement coexists in one individual. So you could have any of those um, mixed together. So typically people with CP um, have movement disorders or motor dysfunction, but they don't necessarily have um, uh, brain dysfunction in their, you know, they have normal learning abilities, normal language abilities, um, that sort of thing, but they have the motor dysfunction. Um, CP was traditionally believed to result from difficulties during the birth process, such as um, deprivation of oxygen during the birth process or something like that. But um, epidemiological studies indicate that 80% of cases of CP result from events occurring before the onset of labor. So they're not because of um, the birth process, they're genetic, metabolic, immune, or coagulation disorders maternal infections or endocrine or metabolic disorders that happen before birth. Um, hypoxia during birth is rarely a cause of CP. So a lot of um, OBGYNs have um, extremely high malpractice insurance because um, people are um, afraid that something during birth is gonna happen this, but it, uh, it rarely happens. It's usually something that happened before birth. So that's just another good reason for um, really good, comprehensive um, prenatal care so you can avoid these things. So um, ADHD, I'm just going to briefly go through these. Um, it's characterized by developmentally um, inappropriate attention, impulsivity, and motor restlessness. Um, they don't know what causes it, but um, they have examined the volume of prefrontal cortex the caudate and the putami, which are part of the basal ganglia um, complex, the dorsal cingulate cortex, and the cerebellum is reduced. So clearly something happened during brain devel um, development. Um, stimulant drugs are used to increase the availability of dopamine and norepinephrine in synapses, and it improves function in some individuals. But it's estimated that between 9% of school-age children are affected by ADHD. And of course, those school-age children grow up to be adults with ADHD. So um, a lot of times um, it's useful to, to get that um, diagnosed and figure out ways to deal with it. Um, autism spectrum disorders are, um, there's a, the um, three main disorders that are included in that are autistic disorder, Asperger's disorder, and pervasive developmental disorder, um, where it's not otherwise specified, they say. So um, people with on the autism spectrum engage in repetitive behaviors, they have limited interests, they appear to lack imagination, and they're not interested in interacting with others. So um, it's, a, um, it's a difficult, um, disorder to live with for people. Um, there also, um, there seems to be some sensory filtering thing. All the different sensory information that's coming um, at us all the time, people in, with autism spectrum disorders can't necessarily filter all that out. So um, 
there's brain there's actually brain differences in autism spectrum disorders um in some abnormal shaping and um reduced communication among cerebral areas larger than normal in some areas um and um, it's sort of an interesting that growth into deficit is really common with autism spectrum disorders. There's no relationship between autism and vaccines, although that has been touted a lot. Um, there was a physician who originally reported that association. He has since had his medical license revoked for misconduct specific to the original study. And the journal that originally published the study fully retracted the article. So unfortunately, that's caused a lot of problems with um, people not wanting to get the measles vaccine. But measles is a deadly disease that can kill you. Um, so, and the vaccine doesn't cause autism. So really, anyway, that's all I'm going to say about that. So the summary for developmental disorders, major deformities occur before week 20. Um, during the pre-embryonic stage, three layers of cells are formed. Somites appear during the embryonic stage. Malformations of the central nervous system include um, neural tube malformations, which we didn't talk about anencephaly and Arnold Cherry malformation, um, even though they're in the book, spina bifida and forebrain malformation. Um, other disorders during development include tethered spinal cord, intellectual disability, um, cerebral palsy, um, developmental coordination disorder, and autism. So often in PT, the ones that we're dealing more with are um, spina bifida and cerebral palsy, but of course you will run into people with some of these other things as well.